Good afternoon, everyone. This is Queenie Clem with Queenie's Book Talk and Reviews, and I am your literary ambassador. And today I have Natasha Frazier, an author on my page today. Welcome, Natasha. Thank you. All right, tell us about yourself. All right, so um, I write Christian fiction and devotionals. I have, let's see. Five of my books are fiction, and I have devotionals, and one of the um, devotionals is a, a journal, an actual mm -hmm. one-year journal. Mm -hmm. Okay. What is your genre again? Devotionals and Christian fiction. All right. Who is the author that you admire most in your genre? Well, um, Michelle Stimson. She's my big sister in my mind. <laughs> I met her almost a month ago. Me too. I met her for the first time. Yes. I was like, bow down. <laughs> bow down. Wow. Queen, 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 queen. All right. Tell us about your books. Okay. So the, um, I have a fiction series, Love, Lies, and Consequences. Mm -hmm. The first book in the series here. Um, and the series starts with a young woman who has decided that she's going to be celibate until she gets married. Mm -hmm. And so she ends up meeting this guy who basically charms her out of her panties. It was sort of him finding out that she wanted to be celibate was sort of a challenge to him. Mm -hmm. And so he basically fed her everything that he thought she wanted to hear, um, making her believe that he was going to marry her. And so in comes her her ex-boyfriend who she mm -hmm. dated in college, who she always thought she would marry. And now she gets caught up in this whirlwind romance um, and her life just becomes so messy. And her biggest issue was that, you know, she thought she was strong enough to handle um, anything that came at her, especially when it came to um, her celibacy. And so she allowed herself to, to get put in tempting situations. Mm -hmm. And ultimately, you know, she lost the battle. And so the series just kind of continues on, um, especially in book two, sort of dealing with the aftermath of what mm -hmm. happened. Mm -hmm. And book three in the series is mostly about mm -hmm. um, the guy who pursued her, Rico, mm -hmm. and his wife. And so book four um, is about her picking up the pieces of her life, the wife. Okay. What about your next book? You got any more? So, I have a fiction series. Um, well, I was actually just rethinking this the other day. But Kairos, The Perfect Time for Love, is mm -hmm. a spin mm -hmm. of Love, Lies, and Consequences. It features um, the main character's best friend, Kenzie. And so that is more of just pure love story, her finding love, because she is one of those friends who is in a circle where everyone around her is getting married and having mm -hmm. children and, you know, experiencing all the success in their careers that she felt like she should be experiencing. And so, you know, her plea to God is, you know, when is it going to be my turn? Mm -hmm. You know, I've been faithful mm -hmm. to you. I'm doing what, you know, you've asked me to do and still nothing. And so Kairos is more about God's perfect timing. And so she has to learn that everything happens in, in God's time and not our own mm -hmm. chronological timetable. Mm -hmm. And we are currently getting um, the next book ready, which features characters that were introduced in the last book, um, book four in the Love, Lives, and Consequences series. So it's love story as well. So we're excited about that. I was thinking of making it part of the Cairo series, but it may become part of a Christmas series that I'm working on. So just have to stay tuned for that. All righty. Uh, what is your testimony? So um, one of the things that I like to tell people a lot is that, you know, when I, when I first started writing, people always ask me why, you know, how do you find the time to write? Or, you know, how do you, um, know what to write about or what mm -hmm. game to write. And so for me, I've been wanting to write for a while and I put it off for a very long time. I think the, the itch kind of started in high school 
And then when I went to college, I considered it a bit, but I'm thinking, you know, hey, I need to make some money. So <laughs> writing is not going to be something I'm going to pursue right now. And in 2009, the idea came back to me again. I heard this sermon from um, Joe Olstein that talked about when God has something that he wants us to do, you know, it'll keep coming back to us. Mm -hmm. And so writing was one of those things for me. But again, you know, I didn't do much with it. And in 2011, like it was on me really, really heavy. Mm -hmm. And so I started praying about it more often. And I felt like every time I went to church, the pastor was talking directly to me. And so one of the last times that I prayed about it before starting writing, um, I started reading Joshua 18 and 3. And it says, um, how long are you going to wait before you take possession of the land the Lord your God has already given mm -hmm. And so, and that just reminded me of my own procrastination because some of the tribes of Israel had already taken possession of their land. And so like, okay, God, you said you're going to give this to us, but you know, we don't have it. When are we going to get it? And he says, Hey, it's already yours. You just have to go after it. And so for me, it just reminded me of, you know, God had given me everything that I needed to go ahead and get started. And so I needed to move. So I said, you know, okay, you know what, I'm going to go ahead and write, but still didn't. And fast forward a few months later, it's 2012 you know, I'm at home with my baby, we're, you know, playing on the floor, you know, I was watching T.D. Jakes, he had gone off, and this um, other lady had came on, I still don't know her name to this day, but um, she caught my attention, because she was in the background, she started talking about the book she was supposed to write, and she talked about how she had the title uh, to the books, some of the titles to the chapters, and she had gone to some conference or something, and the speaker called her out, called her to the front and whispered the title of the book in her ear, something that she had never shared with anybody and how um, still after that, she didn't write. But what she said was when God gives us an assignment, we have to remember that it's not for us, it's for his glory. And so that if we don't do it, our assignment can be reassigned. You know, and at that moment, I, I didn't want that to be me. Mm -hmm. I didn't want what God had for me to be real signed to somebody else. I wanted him to know that he could trust me with, you know, whatever it was he wanted me to do. And so and that's when, when I started writing. Okay. What inspired you to write? That's, pre that's pretty much it. Um, I, I love to read. And um, even in my writing, I want to encourage people as well. So that essentially my inspiration okay uh what are your thoughts on reviews i, I think they they can be helpful mm -hmm. uh, i think one of the what i consider one of my my worst reviews actually helped me um because it's one thing when someone is being spiteful but it's mm -hmm. another thing constructive criticism and so, you know, you just take that and, you know, tuck it in and try to make your, your next work better. Mm -hmm. And so I do appreciate reviews. I like to hear what people think about my work, you know, whether you like it or love it. You know, I want to know what you liked and what you didn't like, because not every book is for everyone. Mm -hmm. That's one of the things I have, I have had to learn throughout my time writing is that not everyone is going to like it for, for one reason or another. Who is your favorite author and why? Um, definitely, I'd have to say, um, but like I said, Michelle, because she inspires me. And I just love the way she writes. It's, mm -hmm. it's straightforward, it's to the point, and there's still a message in, in her work. Even though it's entertaining, there's still a message, and I really like that. Okay. Have you read her new book that just came out? Not yet. The, I'm still, I just finished, um, I think it was Love <laughs> Discover, the first one in that series was really good, but I haven't read that. I just saw that. I'm gonna have to get that too. Small Town Love is great. Yeah, you read it already. Yeah, <laughs> yeah um, Michelle, Look, Michelle Lindo Rice and Michelle Stinson are my two favorite. And for them to write a book, I was on it. I was like, I got to get that book. And then they sent it to me to read for an honest review. So I just finished it like two days ago. Okay, it, I bet it was it's good. good. It's good, it's good. Okay. Um, what is your greatest accomplishment thus far? 
in writing, I'd say um, just being able to to keep going. Mm -hmm. um, awards are good and all of that, but to be able to um, be obedient to what God is leading me to do, you know, that's an accomplishment for me in itself. Because, you know, I, I got off my butt <laughs> to start writing because, you know, writing, it takes discipline because you're not going to always feel like it. And so to sit down and put, you know, fingers to keyboard is an accomplishment in itself. Okay. What book from your childhood has shaped you to be a writer today? Hmm. I don't know. I'll tell you when I first started reading heavily, though. Um, one day, my mom came home with one of those um, arabesque books. Mm -hmm, I don't mm -hmm. remember those. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And of course, she didn't read it. It was just kind of lying around. So I asked her if I could read it. And she was like, yeah, sure. I was in high school. Probably some stuff in there I probably still shouldn't have been reading, but she let me read it. <laughs> um, and you know, after that, you know, I was like, okay, when you go to Walmart, you know, give me another book. And so, was, uh, and then I found out my cousins were reading them, so then we would trade books. And so, you know, after after that, you know, I knew I, I wanted to write after that. Yeah. How do you balance the demands of writing with other your other responsibilities? It's a daily balance that's my struggle um because i find that you know i want to work out then i have to do my real job my mm -hmm. job that really pays the bills and then i have kids i have my husband and i still need to write so um some of the best advice that someone just gave me was to just write every day and at one point i did do that but i kind of stopped but lately i, I just started back and so I set little goals for myself. So I was like, I'll just, you know, if I can just do a hundred words, I'll be good. But mm -hmm. that ends up being a thousand words. So I've exceeded my goal. Mm -hmm. um, and so I find that setting those little bitty goals, if you can just sit here for like 10 minutes and write a hundred words, you can do that. You know, next thing you know, I've been here an hour mm -hmm. and I don't feel guilty about it. But um, the hardest thing really is like with balancing with the kids. Mm -hmm. They don't always go to bed like they're supposed to, and the little one like keeps getting up. Mm -hmm. I put her in bed, and ten minutes later she's back. I take her back, and she comes back again, and we're in this battle every night trying to keep her in bed. Mm -hmm. So that's probably the the biggest challenge. Because at one point I would write during my lunch breaks, and when I do get time, I still do that as well. Because I mean, you can easily chop out a thousand words during lunch time. Oh, okay. What attracted you to the genre that you write in? Um, my very first book was a devotional. My first two books were devotionals. And I had always wanted to write fiction. Um, but I knew my work was going to be clean and it was going to uplift God. So mm -hmm. it was an easy choice. Okay. What projects are you working on right now? Right now, I am working on. I'm not going to say working on. I'm about to start a, um, I'm going to write a Bible study. Um, it's called In Pursuit. And it's just going to talk about how God is always in pursuit of us. And I am also working on a Christmas novella series. So, oh, okay. Yeah. So that's the one I'm actively working on, the Christmas novella series. Okay. I've, outline the Bible study. I just haven't started yet. Now I'm convicted. I need to get started. <laughs> <laughs> How can Thank readers you. get in touch with you? Uh, my website, natashafraser.com. Um, on Facebook, my name, Natasha Frazier. Um, Instagram, author underscore Natasha Frazier. And Twitter, um, author underscore Nat Natasha F. So my name on all okay. social media platforms. Before we end, is there anything you would like to share with us that we missed, that I missed? I don't know. I just um, just like to encourage people that, you know, when God is speaking to you, mm -hmm. um, to take some action mm -hmm. and to, to move on that, pray about it, but don't get stuck in that um, saying you're praying about it, 
because you're actually scared to move, um, you pray about it and you hear what God has to say and then take some steps to move. Because a lot of times we say we're waiting on God, but he's waiting on us. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's my, my two cents for today to just stay encouraged and to do what um, God is leading you to do. All right. Thank you. Um, before we go, mm -hmm. like to play a game with us, Natasha. Okay. <laughs> okay. It's called my favorites. Okay. It'll be your favorites. Okay. What is your favorite place to travel for vacation? Right now, Disney World. We're about to go back again. Oh, wow. Your favorite type of flower? Honestly, I don't really like flowers. Um, but I guess if I had to pick one, I'd say a pink rose. Okay. Who is your favorite friend to spend time with? My husband, Eddie. <laughs> and what what is your favorite season? Oh, winter. I love it when it's cold. Too bad I live in Houston. We hardly ever get cold weather. So I love cold weather. And my last question, uh, what is your favorite snack while riding? Ooh, snacks. Um, really anything chocolate with, you know, the fixings in it, nuts and mm -hmm. caramel. Yeah, the good stuff. So I'll say a Snickers or the little turtles. Okay. All right. Well, thank you, Natasha, for coming in today. And um, thank you for your time and your craft. Um, again, this is Queenie Clem with Queenie's Book Talk and Reviews. I am your literary ambassador. Happy reading and have a blessed day. Goodbye. <laughs>